Aloha, my beautiful friends. Krista Ralakshmi Ditten here from San Diego, and uh, welcome to my beautiful abundance uh, challenge. And this is day number 19. I am an abundance anthropologist. I believe we all have hidden talents and treasures inside of us connected to our talents. And when we activate those talents, we activate our holistic abundance, which helps us to manifest our inner fairy tales into the dreams on our terms in this reality. So welcome and I hope you have had fun so far. If you get here, please say aloha. I see Pirat is already here. And today we have a really exciting topic, which is courage. And uh, we'll also include, of course, the inner family and connection to holistic abundance. So first I have a question for you. What is courage for you? Just kind of think about it. And if you can um, also comment in the comment section, uh, what is courage for you? What does it mean? What What is it for you? So when I started to think about it, um, I came to some really interesting discoveries and insights yesterday, but I wanted to also uh, read um, what actually Wikipedia says about it. So courage, also called bravery or valor, is the choice and willingness to confront agony, pain, danger, uncertainty or intimidation. Physical courage is bravery in the face of physical pain, hardship, death or threat of death while moral courage is the ability to act rightly in the face of popular opposition, shame, scandal, discouragement, or personal loss. So um, you hear here they saying physical courage and moral courage. Um, and then uh, you could also say uh, emotional courage, you know, emotional courage would be like, you know, saying no to bad relationships um, in your life. So. Uh, very, very nice um, kind of overview. So I see Eha is here, Aloha, and Kreti is here, Aloha, very welcome. So um, I thought to go through uh, some of the points which I um, kind of uh, went through myself yesterday, and then um, also maybe along the way kind of mention some of the stories which you already have heard. So um, will be a really exciting overview. So. Uh, in general, so uh, when I have been thinking back, like, okay, so did I used to be as courageous as I have been? Um, or uh, where is this coming from? Like a good question also, do you think courage uh, is something we are born with? Or is it something we are kind of, you know, able to develop? So it's a good question to you. What do you think? So um, answer in the comment sections. And um, when I was thinking back to my childhood, so even though I said yesterday that, you know, I felt like I was like growing up in a cotton, you know, really safe um, and kind of um, kept like that. I actually had a lot of freedom to be in the nature and do a lot, lot of things, you know, which uh, most uh, uh, children nowadays don't even know you can do and don't dare to do. So also one of the things which, you know, we didn't have an issue like we have now is, you know, we spent, uh, you know, countless of hours in the nature and um, we hardly ever had any tick problems. And nowadays, you know, um, if you get the bad tick, you may actually die, you know. So um, things are glad, you know, things have changed. So you have to be more careful and aware of what you do and where you go and so on. So uh, small things like that. But um, um, when I went back and was thinking like, so what are the base uh, for my own courage? Um, so what I found was, my attitude or mindset that everything I do is an experience. So this way, I don't even classify it as a failure or success. It's an experience. And if I kind of approach anything what I'm going to do with that mindset, then um, I don't, you know, um, actually put myself down or make my fel my myself feel guilty or bad or whatever. So that kind of opens up like that courage uh, part to come up on board. And it's like, okay, we have nothing to lose. We basically just, you know, jump on board and try and figure out like how that feels. So that's a good point to uh, try out as well. 
So a uh, second one is uh, everything is practice. So that's the same thing. So if I'm going to do something all over again, over again, over, over again, I take it also with my mindset that this is practice. And the same, I don't classify it any other way. So practice means practice. So if you want to be good in something, you have to practice. So my uh, Facebook Live uh, challenge uh, for this month is a lot of practice. I have lots of mini performances. I rehearse. I go through the old stuff, I improve, and then I practice. So, so this is the way um, you uh, kind of also like kind of, uh, it almost feels like you build your courage muscle, you know. Um, and a very, very important uh, third point which came out was that everything is divine. So even if from the outside people can tell me, oh, Crystal, you failed uh, terribly with this thing or that thing, you know, as um, I remember many people told me when I had these uh, many of relationships and none of them was really, you know, uh, going anywhere. So they all told me I'm, I'm such a failure in relationship. I shouldn't even talk about it, you know, um, but the thing is, you know, now failing so many times in their, you know, um, perspective, I actually learned so many more things. Like, you know, if you take a person who is in a happy marriage for 20 years, most probably didn't experience many of the things I experienced within those 20 years, you know, going from relationship to relationship. So there are different perspectives and ways to see it. And as we go to this, like everything is divine, what happens with that mindset is that you realize like, oh my God, even if this doesn't go anywhere or if this doesn't, you know, lead anywhere I would like to, I actually know that this is a next step for something else coming uh, with the divine guidance and divine orientation game, if you want to call it like that. So every person who I met in my life and had a relationship with was a preparation for me to meet Michael, my twin spirit. And what the journey that was, like how many years, basically almost 15 years, you know, 30 countries. And then, you know, uh, I was so ready. I knew who I would like to meet, who is really, you know, the kind of person and man who I would like to have beside me. And I remember some years prior that I talked to one of my best girlfriends and said, I don't think a person or a man who would really fit or stand equally beside me exists. And uh, she said, Crystal, I think I need to disappoint you. I think he exists and probably many. It's just a question, you know, to uh, find him. And that's so true. So even if you right now don't have that, you know, uh, partner in your life who you feel equal and, you know, respected and loved and so on, uh, he's out there and more and more you work with yourself with all of the tips and tools I have been throwing out here too, more chances you have to, you know, uh, attract that person into your uni universe. So, and uh, one major other point which I found was I, when I felt inside of me, my inner woman was really screaming, Crystal, now you're going to Mexico with one way ticket or now you're going to Hawaii for three uh, months, three times at the time, you know, then uh, even when my mind or my inner man was not quite sure how to make it happen, because the inner woman's, you know, um, intuition and impulse was so uh, strong, I started to act and I, I took also my inner child on board and figure out creative ways how to make it work and started to go towards the goal, even if I didn't know how exactly it's going to like, you know, um, come out and manifest and so on. And that's the huge mistake many people do. And that's where they kill their courage is like, oh, yeah, I would like to go to Hawaii with Crystal to, you know, be part of her 10 day adventure retreat. But I don't have 4,000 euros uh, in my bank account, you may think, you know. But then it is about, it is the choice, you know. Okay, I'm going to make the choice. So uh, how many hundreds of dollars or euros I could put on the side? And if I do that for a certain number of months, then I will get there eventually. But the point is most people don't take that first step. 
and then it will be one day one day and that one day may never come so um that's like kind of you know um shooting your own foot so um and then the next step was to be very trust trusting towards myself my inner family and also um you know uh, the universe so trusting that when i take those steps because i had that you know uh, urge to move and the intuition was telling me then uh, things will actually fall in place and i will get uh, there and i will manifest what what's need to be um, happen so that's another key which i talked about um, in the mantra session talking about mantra how important it is to trust you know even if you don't see like kind of that example you all have heard, you know, you sit in a car in the dark and you have um, certain feet or certain meters, your lights are showing you the way. And even though you don't see the whole way to your destination, you're still driving. So it's kind of the same way. You're still driving and you trust that the road will get you there. So um, what kind of adventures you will have there, you don't know, but you have uh, made a choice, you will get there. So yeah and another huge thing which has really kicked my own ass so to say is um my knowing that i have you know maybe about the average life missions um in me and certain things which i need to manifest and do and i just don't have the luxury uh, to over procrastinate or not do those things so i know that i have to keep my own ass and get out there more and do certain things to get these things going and i know that if i don't then um, i will have a repeat lesson meaning if i die in this uh, you know body then i have to come back and do it over again so uh, how and what can i do to be the most effective and productive in this lifetime so that i can share all my gifts in these packages which people need right now from me um so that has really kind of you know been behind my moves from you know uh, uh, south africa to northern norway from estonia to hawaii or mexico you know these are really big leaps you know uh, going to different countries and cultures it takes a lot of guts as as well you know uh, knowing that you're just a woman you know and you're traveling alone you know uh, all of those things add to it as well so and then um, as this story, which I told you about South Africa, uh, when I faced that, you know, I ran out of money with my project and realized that, oh, my God, you know, uh, I can die, you know, uh, die of starvation. So knowing that, OK, but then I have to come back again and start from zero, you know, like like a video game, you know, so it's like, oh, I don't want to do that. So what that actually did was also that it killed my fear of death. And um, uh, that's really, really um, amazing because when that happens, your courage will be boosted. So you will be not that careful um, as you, when you would be like really cared, like, oh my God, I, I may get killed, you know? I mean, when it's your time to go, believe me, it will happen. Nothing will like stop it, you know? So until then, I think all of us, we have responsibility to live fully and courageously and do everything we can to find out what our talents are and what our gifts are and put them to work and then share it with the world. And uh, this is why we are here. This is why we were given the body. This is what is our mission, uh, first of all, you know? And, um, uh, that's like a huge thing, you know, um, to figure that out that, oh my God. And believe me, I have been very close to death several times. And um, I know that also every time this has like come closer to me, it has been a warning like, okay, so what else do you need to kick ass, you know, to get your things done, you know, uh, don't postpone, you know, this is the time, this is the chance, you know, don't waste it. So very, very important. The biggest currency we have is actually time. We don't think about it like that, but every moment you choose to not, you know, use consciously on this planet, in this body is wasted and you will never get it back. 
So think about that. That's like a huge, huge thing, you know. Another thing which I discovered was the moment I kind of got rid of um, the fear, uh, it's really, really big as, as an Estonian, you know, how to manage, you know, imagine now a country which has been kind of overtaken by many other countries for centuries. And then what it does is in your cellular memory, in your cultural collective memory, you know that you have to always be kind of extra careful. You have to like kind of figure out how, how to manage things and so on. But when you have that fear, um, do I manage, how I manage and so on, you actually push away a lot of the holistic abundance and possibilities and so on because you act out of fear. So if you live from paycheck to paycheck, you actually also live um, in that fear. Maybe you're not conscious about it, but that's where you have to shift it. You have to like uh, tweak it and uh, change it completely. When you step out of it, you start to live without fear, without that managing, uh, uh, how do I manage life fear? And that's so different. Um, in my life, I have been lucky enough to meet several people who have that. And what do you think is one of the main keys what makes them feel that is that their life is in order, they do what they love, and they've also uh, got to, you know, holistic abundance, which means they have the freedom of time, they have the freedom of finances, they do what they're here to do, and they have taken the step and responsibility and courage to fulfill this, you know, mission their body has been given and also taking this uh, task very seriously. So um, that's like um, main core things which kind of uh, popped out uh, with that thought, you know. Um, so um, then I was uh, also um, uh, figuring out there are different types of um, courage is. So uh, courage to stand out, you know, uh, courage to face your fear, uh, courage to overcome yourself or whatever is stopping yourself, you know. So um, you can do these things, um, you know, uh, very easily. You just kind of put things into action. And if you just take those three things, you know, uh, be courageous to stand out. That's not often so easy because we are so like, you know, invested in like, oh, what would others think? And this is also why I stood out when I started to work with angels in Estonia in 2005. And suddenly I was invited to, you know, TV shows and radio shows and uh, written in magazines and newspapers and so on. And then, of course, because I stood out, everyone started to criticize me. The uh, tsunami of critique which came back and, um, you know, uh, how it came back, plus all the psychic attacks which were connected to that, that was crazy. Most people who are not strong enough um, wouldn't survive it. But I was training myself, you know, uh, sometimes also when something came out, I just went to read the comments just to kind of uh, train myself to also receive this kind of stuff and also, you know, uh, train my courage muscles. So uh, really amazing. So um, I will bring now a couple of examples of um, the situations which I've already mentioned uh, within these days too, but then it connects uh, with those things uh, which I just told you about. So um, I probably in some of the uh, lives earlier before the challenge was talking about the speaker's training moment uh, with Brendan Bouchard, Bo Eason and Roger Love in uh, Santa Clara uh, now almost one and a half years ago. So I got the ticket to go to the stage and speak in front of like 200 people for three minutes. And then each one of those coaches was coaching me for three minutes. And that, I would say, was one of the most uh, craziest moments I've had recently, but also most amazing moments because that was very courageous, you know. And, you know, universe wanted me to get out there. And just the day before, I wrote in my journal that I would like to be on the same stage with Brendan Bouchard. And there I was. <laughs> I had no idea that 24 hours later I was already there, you know. And that boosted my energy and my confidence and the whole 4E system got really boosted. 
And what's really amazing is that when we went to um, the influencer event here in San Diego this last uh, autumn, there was a lady in the toilet who uh, came out and said, oh, I remember you, you were on the stage, you were talking about um, the story in Mexico and it was amazing, like you just stood out and I was just so like um, amazed and you had your husband in your in, in the audience and you talked about how you guys met and like the story connected to it. I remember you and I was like, wow, that's amazing. So my courage, but not only, I also put the news that I chose a really good story so that she remembered me like a year later, like, oh my God, that's really amazing, you know? So um, that's one way how I expressed and could, you know, practice my courage. So another one was free diving. So imagine now having the fear of death and now going to the deep waters, like 23 meters. If you go back also, um, I also put the free diver video into the Wantra Day um, uh, blog. So um, going there and, you know, facing my fear, knowing what to do, all of these things and um, I actually started to love uh, being under the water so much you know it was uh, really really amazing to um, feel that you know peace and quietness and tranquility you don't have anywhere else and then I realized like oh my god I was so afraid of this like why <laughs> you know and that's the thing oftentimes we are afraid of things we don't even know uh, why we just have to like face or you know um, uh, figure those out and the last example I'm going to use is basically um, I one time got an invitation to go to Italy to meet a new friend um, an African friend who lived there with 40 other African people in that house and um, I had never met, ever met him before and that was like really crazy uh, thing and I went to their uh, 1st of January um, uh, church uh, gathering with 1000 other Africans I was the only white girl in the house so you can imagine and as I was there um, all these men started to approach me with marriage proposals because they saw I was something so different and so like courageous like to be there and then of course all the women there got very jealous and it's like oh yeah yeah again a white woman coming and taking all the best of our men you know and I said whoa 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 like you know calm down I'm not here to take anyone I'm just you know visiting a friend so uh, things like that of course you have to be very careful not to you know uh, get in trouble you know so um, now to wrap it up so each one of these um, uh, examples and points I came uh, and uh, uh, showed to you is connected to our inner child inner woman and inner man so um, if you are very very scared so the first thing you need to do is with your inner woman and inner child in a in a man talk to your inner child and make clear like why this fear is not really reasonable and uh, how the inner man can also say uh, this is okay this is safe uh, we can do this and um, then when you also get a little more information how these things are and also maybe you know practice or do whatever you need to before doing whatever you are going to choose to do which is courageous so you will go through it so smoothly and as i've also said before there are lots of treasures hidden behind your fear so as you get to the other side the feeling you have like it's amazing as i came down from that stage with brendan bouchard and the two others I felt like I had won a lottery, you know, it, it carried me for months, um, that energy, that like bravery. And I knew that this is the place where I should, you know, practice to get more uh, of to be the public speaker and um, to travel the world like this as well. So um, this is uh, one way to practice, you know. So and now um, the inner woman, as I told also before, inner woman is the person who is always giving you those impulses. And when you start to get the impulse that it's so strong that it almost feels like you need to pee, you have to go and you have to start the first step and then 
the next step will come and then uh, have your inner man on board and then things will manifest. So that um, mountain trip I told you about in, how, in Mexico, in, in uh, Norway, uh, which I did for two weeks, like my own pilgrimage, that preparation was actually two years. I went out to the mountains with several mountain friends during winter, autumn, like different uh, seasons. And I got really, um, you know, uh, lots of practice how to survive and how, what to do and what to not do, you know. Uh, even, you know, how to make fire in the snow. It's like uh, not that easy, you know. So things like that. So uh, I practiced two years without even knowing, you know, <laughs> going skiing and doing all these things. And then I felt like that the desire to go to that mountaintop got so big and I knew that I have to go alone. And when I got back from that mountain after two weeks, I was crying because I had connected with myself the way I had never been connected before. This mountain had become my boyfriend, so to say, and I have been going back and back uh, so many times and uh, hopefully in the future uh, we'll go back again, maybe bring some beautiful people with me as well. So uh, really amazing. So, uh, so this is the way it activates and then of course, if you put all these things into works, like going back to the Wantra story, so the inner woman said, okay, let's go to Hawaii. Uh, inner man came on board. Inner child was like uh, over the moon because she had the dream to swim with the wild dolphins for like the whole uh, lifetime, you know. And then uh, everything came together. We got there and we got the water therapy. And then step by step, you know, Wantra was coming out. And then that was another, you know, uh, life mission sec section coming out and putting that into use. Of course, I started to also create more holistic abundance. It's so simple. That's why I love new time energy tools and tips and, you know, understanding of life. And when I say new time energy, if you haven't seen any other of the videos before. So if you were born before 1995 and you, um, have not adjusted your aura or done aura transformation, then uh, you most probably are still in the old time energy in the rainbow energy and seven chakra systems. When you were born 95 and later, you were most probably born with the new chakra system and indigo energy, later crystal energy, now golden energy, and soon uh, it will be also diamond energy. I will do... Um, uh, another live about uh, this and um, uh, we can go deeper into it and um, actually uh, let's do this tomorrow so I'll talk about my journey to aura transformation the energy work and all how that came about uh, with the inner family as well uh, how it has been uh, basically the common thread throughout all these years since 2007 till now 13 year is uh, going now um, as my holistic abundance foundation. Um, so uh, also getting me to places and people and times where I was supposed to be, when I was supposed to be. Um, so it has been one of the most amazing things happening to my life. So, and today's uh, task uh, will be on the task sheets. Um, I will do a little more uh, courageous kind of uh, kick things and um, uh, we'll check out if someone put some pictures or videos uh, about yesterday's so we will see and then uh, go through the uh, tasks as well and enjoy and if the inner family thing is getting more and more intriguing you're interested to come on board to the coaching program with me for four months so uh, starting in February, um, inner child, inner woman, inner man, and the whole family together, uh, $250 per month. Uh, let me know. I'm so happy and glad to uh, welcome you to the program. Go deeper, help you to build a new foundation to your relationships, to your life, to your holistic abundance, and to your life on your uh, terms. So thank you so much. Uh, please like and share, uh, subscribe, and uh, Talk to you tomorrow. Mahalo.